Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. And also, I want to point out, Judy said, do you need some water? I said, no, I'm a dairyman. I'll bring my milk. <laughs> <laughs> I am really excited to be down here and have this opportunity to be with you today at the Cow Palace. My first trip to the Cow Palace was in ooh, 1963. Um, I was on the state of Nevada 4-H winning livestock judging team. And we got to come to the Cow Palace to judge. Um, and, and the place is still just as awesome to me today as it was back when I was uh, about 14 years old. So um, it's an exciting, you are gonna have a fantastic time here today and uh, just a thrilling place in the middle of San Francisco to be in the, the greatest ag pavilion there is in the country. Um, as Stephanie mentioned, I am a fourth generation agriculturist. My great grandparents um, came west from Germany um, in 1882. Uh, and my family has been involved in agriculture all those years. And uh, interestingly, uh, one side of my family was involved in the dairy industry, and the other side, my maternal grandparents, were involved in the beef cattle industry. Uh, and raised crops. So we have a diversified um, operation. Uh, the starting of that operation was providing um, a lot of the food and products for the mining industry, both in um, the Sierra, um, in, in Eastern California, I have to get my bearings right, and, and also the mining industry in, in Nevada. And when I walked in this morning, and heard those turkeys down there, that food source came back really quick to me. I've been doing very well this morning, but when I was growing up, we would always have 30 or 50 turkeys at home on the farm, and I am deathly afraid of turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, yeah. um, they will attack you, and they are vicious. When you're about five years old, and there's 30 of them there. They outnumber you and can get you down on the ground in nothing flat. So um, I learned really quick, animals are created as a food source and they are not pets. So I have no problem eating turkey. But, uh, <laughs> we're gonna have a discussion all day long, I think. But anyway, um, a couple of the things I want to talk to you about about the, the, the agriculture industry is the transition. Um, it's, it's not a job for most agriculturists, it is a lifestyle. And it's great to be able to pass that lifestyle on to your children or grandchildren. In my case in the dairy industry, I couldn't even get the family to come visit me because there was always work to do. It's a 24-7 it's a job. But I knew that there are people out there who love doing the job as much as I do. And so that's basically how I transitioned our farm. Um, my wife says I'd still be milking cows today if it weren't for this young couple who wanted to get into the dairy industry in the worst way from California. And we actually transitioned the dairy to them. Um, I said, you know, you need to come in and manage the dairy for me for a year. Take over, run it. Make sure you really want to do this. And, and I can tell right away his love for cows and the dairy business was as, as well enriched as my own. And um, so then the next year we start selling the cows and he leased the property and now he's in the process of buying the property. That's one of the problems with the agricultural industry, your land intensity, capital poor. And so it's very hard for young people to get into the industry but there are ways in which we found uh, was a great opportunity for him to get involved in the dairy industry, and I know my cows are gonna be taken care of uh, for the next generation. Uh, the interesting thing, um, and, and you may have heard of this, about corporate farming and corporate agriculture. Well, a year after he bought my 150 cows, he realized that, because he's a businessman, that he had to increase. So he wanted to increase to about 300, 400 cows. And he formed a corporation. 
Now, he is no more a corporate farm than someone with a backyard garden is. But because of the tax structure and, and stuff, it was in his best interest to become a corporation. So he and his wife are the corporation. And so a lot of times in the media when you hear about corporate farms, they really are family farms. It's just a tax structure move that they, they make. He's milking 450 cows, which is a big increase in what I would do, but it was basically economies of size. He, as a, he couldn't just milk cows, he had to become a businessman. And that's what makes it him so successful. Um, the other thing that I want to kind of talk about is we've all heard the, the, the saying, know your farmer, know your food. Well, and especially here in California, your farmer may be a corporation and may have a large thing, but he has still the same or she has the same love of the land and, and love for what they're doing as a small farmer. Uh, one of the things that I would like to uh, talk about too is it, because it's my passion now, after we sold the cows, I had more time and I went and bought some beef cows and my nephew now is the fifth generation on the ranch and he's a rancher, he's not a farmer, he tells me all the time. Uh, but they, they are public land ranchers. They have private property, but they do a lot of their cattle grazing on public land. And it's fun to go up each summer with him and see what he's doing on your land. Because as public land or federal land, you and I all own that land, and it's managed by the, the federal government. But as a cattle rancher, he pays a fee to be able to allow to run his cattle on there. And it is some of the most beautiful country I've ever seen. It's not suitable for growing any kind of a crop, but I have been up there with him and where he has developed water, uh, water troughs um, to improve the habitat um, for wildlife as well as his cattle. Um, it's got the most fantastic fishing stream up there. So I go up every summer. I'm not telling them where it is. <laughs> um, but I go up there to fix fence for him so that he can keep the cattle off of the stream bed it's called the riparian area. And, and you know my fishing pole fits right on the back of his four-wheeler while I'm <laughs> fixing fence for him. So some of the things we hear about the abuse of public lands and stuff is, is not always true. There have been abuses in the past and we're not all uh, the very best caretakers of the land, but those poor caretakers weed themselves off the land. Am I getting close to my 10 minutes? You are. Okay, I was waiting for the hook. So, um, I hope that gives you enough information for uh, some great questions and stuff afterwards. So, and, and remember to get your dairy products. Great day. <laughs>